Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to ELI, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us uh, Anuj Kumbhat, uh, who is the founder of Weather Risk Management Services, also called as WRMS. Uh, hi Anuj, welcome to ELI. Yeah, hi, uh, hi Priya. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, Anuj, I would request you to introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a bit about your uh, pre-entrepreneurial story, like where were you born and brought up, uh, where did you study, which all companies did you work for, and was there a glimpse of entrepreneurship in your pre-entrepreneurial journey as well? So, uh, uh, I basically was uh, born and brought up in uh, Jodhpur, uh, and uh, I, it's a small town, uh, I would say tier two city in the, in the country. Yeah. And I have studied there uh, uh, after my 12. I uh, basically studied CA uh, and job accountancy and also graduation in commerce. And uh, have then finished chartered accountancy. And uh, then I started working. My working journey started at the age of 21 when I finished my CA. And uh, while I was working, I also studied company secretary. So I finished my company secretary course uh, while I was working. Started my, uh, I would say, working life as a, a financial analyst or executive in paper industry, where I was part of acquisitions, mergers, and export uh, credit. And uh, uh, spent a couple of years over there in paper company. Uh, and then I moved to... to a uh, very different industry, which was oil and gas. And uh, uh, again, the focus was, uh, I was uh, financial analyst and export analyst, uh, basically uh, working closely with the management of the company, uh, which was a joint sector company, and uh, uh, spent time in MRPL. MRPL is a company where I was for two years. And uh, at that time, uh, the company was going through debt restructuring and also uh, there was an acquisition of company which took place while I was working in the company. ONGC put, uh, bought M MRPL from the current stakeholders. And uh, we I was involved in that exercise and eventually after spending two years over there, I moved to, uh, again, a very different sector in insurance industry. And uh, that's where my journey with insurance and risk management started. Uh, so I joined ICSA Lombard General Insurance Company in its uh, early days uh, and uh, when we were working in a, uh, uh, that company, since it was a, a private sector company and private privatization of insurance industry happened just a few years back, the focus was on launching new products. Uh, the way it was like that, how do you bring out new products so that market penetration increases? So we were part of the structured product groups, which was basically development of new solutions or new insurance products. And as part of that journey uh, or that work, we, uh, for the first time globally, we designed uh, weather index insurance for smallholder pharma. Okay. Uh, the idea was that the, uh, the current insurance scheme or erstwhile insurance scheme, which was, which was there at that time, was not working well. It was not covering large number of farmers. Less than about 10% of farmers were insured. And large number of farmers were not insured for various reasons, including uh, the time it was taking to settle the claim and uh, the way the product was designed and way it was promoted. So we saw an opportunity here and we thought that uh, this pro product which we are talking about, whether index insurance, can settle very fast. Uh, it can pay instant claims and it's much easier to explain and understand. And the focus was to cover the large uh, scale risk, which is climate risk or weather risk of farmers. So that's when the weather index insurance product was designed and piloted while we were working in ICC Lombard. And uh, 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 when we piloted it successfully, uh, me and uh, the person, uh, my co-founder, uh, both of us, he was the one who initially thought about such product and worked with World Bank team to design it and then both of us worked on it. Uh, so both of us saw an opportunity that we can start our own venture to take this insurance product to larger number of smallholder farmers. And that's how our uh, venture journey started. The idea was uh, basically that uh, if we can offer uh, index insurance to large number of smallholder farmers in India, because there are 132 million farmers in India, 
and founding families in India, and there is a big opportunity uh, here. So that really resulted uh, in, I would say, Christianing or development of weather risk management services, and we started this company as starting with partnership firm, but within a year, we registered it as a company and uh, started offering weather index insurance to various partners and, uh, uh, and to various clients. And uh, during this journey of uh, actually offering this product, uh, basically, uh, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, introduced new solutions and new ideas. So that's my journey as, as a corporate employee to entrepreneurship, if I put it this way. Got it. Uh, speaking of WRMS, I, I understand there is some uh, technology also involved in, you know, predicting the weather and uh, underwriting, uh, finding the right underwriting value for, for a particular uh, region and, and all. So can you, can you explain how it all works? How do you calculate the uh, premiums for a insurance uh, in a particular region? So basically, weather index insurance, as we call it, or climate risk insurance, uh, the idea is to basically use weather, historical weather data and parameters to uh, evaluate uh, what could be the payout in the past 30, 40 years. Uh, and using that as a benchmark, uh, uh, you assess what, could, what is the amount of risk and what is the probability of certain amount of payout. So you basically develop uh, the historical payouts uh, of past 30, 40 years and do stochastic modeling, which is basically probabilistic analysis on that data to understand what could be the probable maximum loss or the maximum amount of payout you can make, let's say, if you offer this product for next 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that decides uh, basis what you have paid in the past, you would have paid if you would have offered this product in the last 30 years or what you could pay in case you have to do it in the next 30 years uh, is what so you do simulations around what are the probable payoffs and not just next 30 years you can do simulation up to 200 years to really next 200 years to understand what is probable maximum loss and that evaluation results in calculation of premium using stochastic modeling and uh, simulate Monte Carlo simulation and uh, various other techniques and once you do the premium calculation, you load it you, uh, on uh, with expense uh, expenses of insurance companies and intermediaries and management. So what is called as management cost and uh, capital cost and also the intermediary charges. And that's how the final premium, which is payable by the beneficiary is calculated. Mm. Uh, and whether data plays a critical role in it. And that's the key to de designing and uh, evaluation of uh, risk in weather index insurance. Okay, uh, and uh, curious to know how do you source the weather the data that too for last 30, 40 years, uh, which all uh, sources and data points do you use? You, right now we are using, uh, uh, when we started, we were using Indian Meteorological Department data and a lot of uh, weather station data sets of, uh, and these were manual rain gauges of state governments. So we have, in fact, in initial days, we have also punched the paper records uh, of insurance companies, uh, uh, sorry, paper records of the government and generated a uh, lot of weather data or precipitation data. So close to 15,000 such manual rain gauge data sets uh, is what we've digitalized or uh, taken and cleaned the data. It was already digitized. We cleaned the data uh, and we created the historical database for India. Uh, uh, more recent years, we have started also started using graded data sets and calibrating graded data sets uh, of uh, weather stations, or uh, not just weather station, the cl climate data from remote sensing and uh, basically rudders. Uh, this is being used, so we generate time series of uh, uh, downscale model data using the model data which is provided by NASA, NOAA, University of uh, Colorado, and lots of other data sources like uh, Japan Met Office, Australian Met Office, Euro European Met Office, and Indian Meteorological Department. So this graded data is also used. Apart from that, we also use remote sensing data, uh, which is vegetation indices and soil moisture indices, and, uh, and yield data sets, agriculture yield data. Again, uh, we have built repository of uh, agriculture yield, yield data sets for close to about 10 countries. And in India, again, we did, we took the records from the paper books of uh, Department of Agriculture libraries 
and uh, and punch those data sets to create the historical data. So that's how we have generated our data. But apart from that, the key is the settlement of insurance contracts. Indian Meteorological Department doesn't have enough stations and manual stations take time to collate the data. So we did the installation of automatic weather station that turned out to be a new revenue model for us. And we now have about 4,000 automatic uh, weather station of our own. And we have sold close to uh, 11,000 weather stations to various uh, institutions, governments, countries, uh, uh, not just in India, but about five different countries apart from India. Got it. Uh, can you can you uh, tell us a little bit on the scale of operation right now, as in how how many banks are partnered with us, how many farmers do take our uh, use our services and all? So uh, till now we have serviced close to about ten million farmers. Currently we are servicing about uh, if not more, close to five hundred thousand farmers. And uh, apart from that, through our station network, we are probably helping a lot of beneficiaries, not just farmers, other other livelihoods and low income communities, uh, because we are installing our station for disaster management departments of various states, and they are using the data to do give early warnings to low income communities to basically manage their risk better and to help them to take uh, measures to uh, manage any eventuality or any catastrophic event. So yes, impacting large number of lives uh, indirectly. Directly, probably we are reaching out to about five hundred thousand farmers. Wow, that's a massive scale. But I'm sure uh, it it all had a humble uh, starting journey. So uh, speaking of that, I understand um, WRMS started in two thousand four. Uh, can you go go back to two thousand four and tell us a little bit about the initial days, initial hurdles of uh, starting this venture? So the key problem is that in 2004, uh, let me put it this way, there was nothing like EgTech. There was no AgTech, there was no climate tech, there was no InsurTech. This was just insurance company and clients. Yeah. Uh, there was no cloud. Cloud was only rain cloud. There was no cloud computing. There was no big data. And artificial intelligence was not there. AI in agriculture was artificial artificial insemination. So, uh, so when we started our journey, uh, we basically started with uh, crunching data and doing analysis in Excel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did it till the time the cloud came in and it was easy to process much larger amount of data. And uh, so from Excel, we moved to basically uh, platforms, which were SQL platforms, which are no cloud platforms. And then to cloud where we were, we are, we have now been able to build no SQL platform. So that was the initial journey on the data side. When we were actually uh, initial days, I mean, just from the personal perspective, I think we were actually moving around in buses and trains and reaching out to farmers, meeting them personally. I mean, I would have met about, if not more, about two, three thousand farmers in each year when in during the initial days. And making, uh, I mean, making people understand our proposition, making partners like agri input companies, agro processing companies, procurement companies understand the value of this pro product, and including the governments. So it was, it was not easy to push this through, uh, through uh, various governments. And we started our journey while working from basically a one room office, uh, first from home, and then from one room office. Uh, and that was a setup which was there for a couple of years and then we slowly grew. Uh, that's how the journey has, uh, from the personal perspective and from the organizational perspective, we, again, two of us started together. Now we are a team of about 300 people. Uh, uh, and uh, so that, that has been the journey and in increment which has happened. Um, I think it's been almost two decades since it, uh, it, it all started. Yes. Uh, so can you tell us some of the major, major pivots or uh, challenges that you faced along the way that that kind of, you know, uh, were some of the big ups and downs for your venture? So I think the first big thing which happened was that when we were actually meeting the farmers and offering them weather index insurance, farmers came to us and told that uh, your uh, weather insurance pays me on the basis of station, which is about 50 kilometers away. It's a government station, but it's too far. Uh, so I don't I don't think so. My weather correlates or is same as the weather which is being recorded and I've been paid for. So there was a lot of risk of uh, really not paying when there was an actual loss and paying when there was no loss. So that's what you call basis risk in 
parametric or index insurance. Uh, so we realized that we need to uh, put a network of automatic weather station. So we went to IIT Kanpur. Uh, so my partner or uh, the co-promoter of this company was Almanai of IIT Kanpur. So he was from IIT Kanpur. We went to IIT Kanpur, got incubated in IIT Kanpur in 2006. So that was the first journey when we started. In 2000, uh, from six to eight, we actually did engineering on how to develop low cost automatic weather station because the automatic weather station which are available in the market were not affordable. Uh, the program scaling was not possible using more substations. So within two years, we came out with a good set of automatic weather station which can be installed on a larger scale uh, uh, at a low cost. And that cost efficiency brought us to the number which is today, it's this 4,000 network of our own and total of about uh, 15,000 stations installed for various other uh, organizations. So that was the key pivot which has happened that uh, we had we were able to put stations to settle contracts uh, to help farmer get uh, minimize the basis risk. The second thing was that when we were actually meeting farmers, farmer was saying that while you are insuring me, I can save my crop if you can provide me good weather forecast and good weather uh, uh, forecast on time. Mm. So we realized that farmer needs uh, another additional input uh, uh, details, which is weather forecast. We started providing weather forecast over SMS because there was no smartphone at that time. And there was basically feature phone most of the farmers were having. And this weather forecast were going to farmers twice a week. And farmers were able to take decision on the basis of that forecast. So that was another addition to what we were starting to give. So we had started generating our own forecast uh, uh, and downscaling a lot of what Indian Meteorological Department was generating so that it becomes a more localized. Uh, and that has continued and now we are very local. We generate forecasts at three kilometer grid. So that is the third uh, major pivot happened when, uh, when the cloud computing and big data started working and when uh, Sentinel-1, which is like uh, when high resolution satellite images were made available, uh, we could go from village or I mean, I would say a block to directly to the farm. And we started offering farm level services to the farmers, both in terms of uh, not just weather forecast, but more holistic agriculture advisory with detailed uh, agri plan for the farmers, which is bespoke, which is uh, basically individualized for each farmer. And this is done using algorithms and technology of big data, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. So that's a pure challenge. During the course of this, we got financial support from various institutions, including SIDB, grants from ILO, and Ford Foundation. And then we got an investment in 2016 from UPL. So that's how the journey has been uh, in terms of pivoting and growing. Mm. Anuj, uh, from a personal side, tell us what made you to become an entrepreneur? Uh, because uh, I think you were already working for uh, major uh, financial organizations. And uh, I am sure you know, the life was comfortable, good salary. Why did you you know, choose to be, uh, uh, become an entrepreneur? So at a personal level, I'm a, I'm a very curious person. I'm, 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 uh, I basically... I love to try new things. I like challenges and I am I have ability to take risks and big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, uh, I would say I'm not risk averse, I'm risk taker. So those are the things on at the personal level which drew me. And I guess uh, while my father has uh, was a banker and he was always in job, uh, most of other family members were in business. So, and I'm a Marwadi. So basically business is ingrained in our, our genes. So, so that's how we, uh, uh, and so entrepreneurial journey was probably a, a natural extension of my, my enthusiasm for trying new things and also to take up challenges which are key and I mean, large scale challenges. And that risk taking, uh, I would say nature helped me in taking that decision. Uh, uh, that's from the personal point of view. That's what that's what drove us uh, to this. Yeah. Uh, so all these years of entrepreneurship, I'm sure you you would have learned a lot of lessons about uh, entrepreneurship, which we can take away and probably apply to our ventures as well. Tell us some of the top learnings you had uh, uh, in these two decades of entrepreneurship. 
So first thing I think uh, you have to burn all your bridges if you want to be an entrepreneur. Because if you don't burn all your bridges and if you keep, let's say, I would start entrepreneurship while I'm working in a job and then uh, see when it grows, I'll leave the job. Uh, then your heart is not there in the whole business uh, on the system. So you'll have to burn bridges, which means that you'll have to give everything to it. And you can't put your foot, uh, uh, each feet or each foot in uh, two different boats or uh, work streams. So yeah. that is one. Uh, and I think uh, that was uh, that was one thing which secondly uh, and I guess the most important thing is that you have to f identify and uh, nurture uh, the right resources which can take you forward uh, and uh, that is that is important uh, uh, the third and uh, important thing which we which has lived with us and which has helped us in growing is perseverance and hard work i think there's there there isn't any any alternative to that that's uh yeah. that's a thing which you cannot do without uh and uh, so i mean perseverance and hard work is basically absolutely uh, one of the key important things of uh, entrepreneurship so i would say that these are some of the things which i have learned and the lessons i've learned uh, also from the mistakes which you made in the past uh, one thing which you've learned from the mistakes which you made, made in the past that it's important to be focused. You can't do a lot of things uh, at the same time. So you'll have to identify where you want to really make a charge or take a charge and take move forward. And at times give up on some of the opportunities which are more short term in nature to focus on longer term, more fruitful and scalable opportunities. So that's what I would say. Got it. My final one, um, tell us what is the meaning of entrepreneurship for you? How would you define the term entrepreneur or process of entrepreneurship? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's quite simple. A person who is who has, who has ability to take a risk and who has ability to, uh, entrepreneur for me is who has ability to take the risk and who has ability to bring together the talent and resources required to really move forward and generate revenue and uh, uh, revenue and resource uh, outcomes for the company. Uh, so, uh, what sets apart a professional and entrepreneur from a professional is basically entrepreneur's ability to take the risk. Uh, okay. And I would say uh, ability, capacity, and uh, wherewithal to take the risk. That sets apart an entrepreneur. I, was, I have been professional. I was professional. Uh, but what made me entrepreneur was my ability or my capacity or my willingness to take risk. And which is where uh, I think, the, which is what entrepreneurship is all about. You take those, you play on those bets where uh, odds are not completely in your favor. And... Mm -hmm. That's what entrepreneur is all about. Yeah, that's so true. Thanks for joining us, Anuj. It was a pleasure to have you on our platform and our best wishes for WRMS. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, you. Anuj.